Ni hao shu shang jia. I think that's Chinese for hello collectors. And so a long time ago I got this mini EV 6x6 by Xcar Toys. And it's supposed to be, I guess, from 2021. And it's a funky vehicle. Uh, I got the dimensions wrong because I, the dimensions were really for, published for that and not the full length. But anyways, a couple of my subscriptions, uh, as usual, feed in and they reminded me to try these other X-Car toys. Uh, so you got uh, Silver, Silver 64, and Twice Diecast. Uh, those guys are always feeding into my YouTube. Sadly, I don't really have time to watch everyone's channels. So. A recent, those two just, you know, reviewed a bunch of X-Car toy models, and so I went and ordered a few more. And knowing that I enjoyed this model, I decided to get the actual regular one. So this is the Wuling Hongguang Mini EV. And yeah, this is the most popular vehicle, electric vehicle, apparently sold in China, according to Wikipedia. So that could obviously be wrong. Uh, it was, retail deliveries began in 2020. And uh, the car company is called Wuling. Actually, it's, excuse me. <coughs> Actually, it seems to be a tri partnership S I A C G M and Wuling. So I don't know if there's a factory on, that's owned by all three of those companies or if it's like a brand sharing. You know, uh, well, I don't really know. Please leave a comment if, if you want to educate the viewership, including me. All right, so let's see. We have T3-03. I don't know if that means series three and number three with that series. I'm just guessing here, speculation. Uh, we have a bunch of Chinese text I can't make out. Is there any sort of date there? It's made in Beijing. It's clearly licensed by Wuling. There's a whole lot of text on this guy. I'm just uh, I always like to know the date because I want to be able to you know, buy something on eBay in 20 years and know how old it is, or we see pictures so I know how old it is, so it helps me set a value of things, you know, the age of something. But uh, no such luck here. Maybe there'll be at least a copyright on the bottom so we know when the mold was made. I have a suspicion this is a... Maybe it's considered a K-Class car? Although I don't know if it's even sold in Japan. K-Classes are for Japan. But it's definitely small. Let's take a look at these photographs here. Okay, a little further here. Let me look up a little more info here on good old Wikipedia. So there is a, obviously this three-door hatchback, but this also is supposed to be a two-door convertible. And then this thing is, <laughs> excuse me, powered by a 15 kilowatt or 20 horsepower. Or, let's see, I guess the biggest motor is 30 kilowatts or 40 horsepower equivalent. And it's an electric vehicle, remember, it's electric. <clears throat> and then it's got various battery options. The largest would be 26 kilowatt hours, lithium ion battery. And the wheelbase is only 1940. Actually, that sounds pretty normal compared to other cars, 1940 millimeters. Well, uh, at least a compact car. But the overall length is 2917, less than 3 meters long. So that seems pretty short, you know. A tall man is 2 meters, right? So it's like 1.5 men. Not 2.5 men, that TV show. Curb weight is only 665 kilograms, or f around 1,500 pounds, less than 1,500 pounds. So that's not too heavy. Four bulky guys might be able to steal this. Alright, so this is called the Macaron version, and so the Macaron version it was released in April 2021 and it's supposed to be uh, a little higher end version, it has more standard features, and these wheels are two-tone, and so that's apparently what's going on with this. It came in uh, avocado green, this pink, and I believe a yellow. It also has some redesigned LED lights and a reversing camera. Alright, that's enough about the Mini EV statistically. And let's look into the model now. So sadly, the first thing I see is this paint contaminant. It's just inside the paint, so that's too bad. Before I forget... Hmm... That rear wheel isn't moving at all. Only the front, so... I don't know what's holding it up, because I can move it with a... It seems like it would be a model that would roll freely, but... Beautiful thing is, it's screwed together, so... I might, I, you know what, I will open it up. 
let's do this things out of order today. We'll start with the inside first. Ah, two screws. Hmm. What is that? That screw is clearly out. That screw is clearly out. So what is holding this thing up? One screw's out. I wonder if there's a bunch of sticky paint. That might be it. That screw is out. Alright, yeah. Maybe some sticky paint or something like that. So we might as well get a shot of the interior. Yeah, come on. Oh. So construction wise, we have a piece of plastic just being held up by the interior piece. And it's got the blackout printing on the glass. So not bad. Pretty good. It's nice. And it's die cast metal, of course. Okay. Interior was typical uh, black plastic, but nicely molded details. So. I'm looking at the images, I instinctively want to just repaint this, but the photographs actually show a black interior. I might repaint it anyways, because I would customize this car if I owned it. This car is really inexpensive. They sell them in Thailand, they're less than $10,000. But you do have to question the safety of such a vehicle. You know, if this isn't sold in North America or Europe, you don't want to be driving this thing on a highway. You know, it'd be more like crashing in a golf cart probably so you should watch you might want to watch some safety crash videos on Chinese vehicles and you'll see you will die in those vehicles at any sort of speed but if you live in a big gated community this would make a nice vehicle to get your mail yeah something's going on there's a lot of friction here for some reason this still doesn't want to roll Right? I don't know what the deal is with this thing. Oh, maybe it's the wheels are on too tight? Let me try to undo that. I'm not even sure why I'm doing this effort, because I don't even like models that roll. Oh, but here, no. I guess, yeah, that might be a way to fix it if you guys do want your thing to roll. Just kind of twist one of the wheels looser, and that'll free up some, uh, free up some drag. It is an interesting construction where they actually capture the whole axle, you know, with the metal. So that's actually harder to mold. Anyways, a lot of undercarriage details there. And I like that it says Wooling and it says 164 and X-Car Toys 2021. So it tells you everything you want to know other than the fact that it's called an EV. So that would have been nice. Maybe that Chinese means EV. That's what I'm going to guess. Alright, let's put this back together. Will it go back together nicely? That's the question now. Hmm. Alright, yeah. Hold on. I gotta hand screw all these things back together because I have a feeling that electric wheel will just strip out the die cast. Die cast metal is pretty soft. Find the thread. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, that rear tire is problematic. Alright, not for the Hot Wheels fans then. So the door handle, it's uh, looking alright, you know, it's got some uh, recesses above and below as if your fingers would get in there. This is, this little bump here is supposed to be like a running light. It looks like a white lens, so unfortunately there's no white rectangle printed on there. But the blackout up here is printed on okay, and then it, it does have a casted in mirror, but I, I think I'd rather have casted in mirrors and none at all. There's no silver on the back side though. Um, in the pink, it's kind of thick, you know, filling in the gaps. Pink, white, yellow, all those colors. Red also, very often it has to be laid on thick, because if you don't, you see the dark edge of the casting, like right there. Uh, you might be able to see it. See that dark line? That's the zinc. So that's what's going on there. But you can still see some faint stuff there. 
The wheels, yeah, they're just kind of Tron-like or Dyson vacuum-like, however you want to describe it. They're very simple yet funky at the same time. I cannot focus there. All right. Going to the front, we've got the nice clear headlights and very nice. There's a molded painted silver headlight bucket back there with a dimple in there for like a light bulb. So a lot of depth there. Yeah, a lot of depth there. I like it. Looks nice. The Wooling logo is painted red. Looks very nice and crisp. Some little texture here in the grill looks okay. Some rectangles printed on for those fog lights and unfortunately a blank license plate. We have the casted in uh, wiper blades, but I don't think they're painted black. I think they're just clear. We have some rain gutters printed on up here and some sort of a shark antenna part of the casting. This side, you notice the ride height is quite high. Much higher than the photographs. But that's a problem with that metal base. If it was plastic, you know, if there's a big plastic wall, I could just drill it out and then lower the stance. But if I drill out that, the whole thing won't be captured anymore. So I don't like the whole metal capturing all of a sudden. It doesn't allow fixing this. Look at this. The thing is just like back here. It's, uh, yeah. So that's that's not good. I guess you, if you really want to, you could just remove the axle entirely and use poster putty to make it lower. Maybe I'll do that. You know I will later. I don't need to make you guys watch me do that. So those seats are pretty tall back there. And then nice tail lights. So I do like this because it's got the clear front and rear lights. And these rear lights even have a rectangle casted in behind there. So that's really good. And then there's the third brake light painted red. And then the wooing printing there is there. And some dimples here probably for sensors. And unfortunately nothing on the license plate. Uh, grill texture and then nicely uh, painted red metallic reflectors it looks like. Yeah, they are metallic. I gotta say, you know, minus the fact that the, the way they designed the base, it's a nice model, especially for the price. It's on par. It's actually probably, well, I was gonna say it's better than Para 64 because Para 64 very often doesn't add three-dimensional details before behind their lenses uh, so that's a strike against some of their their models so, but at the same time power 64 always has a reflective sticker and separate mirrors so in that case they are better than this brand but I gotta say this is nice I don't feel like I was ripped off but you know what look at the stance on this side this side the stance looks fine you know what it is maybe I didn't screw that down properly you know because I kind of cross threaded it let me pause and come back. Yeah, it was my own fault. They didn't put that base back. So you can see the gap on that side and the, this side coming up. It's much better. It looks more like the photograph. So, yeah, just got to put it back together properly. Not like an imbecile like me. So here's the uh, 6x6 there. Definitely small cars. Uh, I got a couple other small vehicles. One well, a few other brands here. Another modern one would be this Daihatsu Tanto Custom from the first generation one, and this is made by Doyosha. Doyosha? It's a Japanese model company. I have another one, the Suzuki Wagon R, also from Doyosha. And then I have uh, an, an old Dido. This is the Mazda R360 Coupe, and I believe this is the very first Mazda car. So look how small that is. And this also now brings up the question, K-class cars like this were 360ccs in a certain dimension. I don't know how they're working with the EV cars now in Japan. I'm sure dimensionally the K-class cars still have to fall within the dimensions of these petrol cars. But what about the power rating? You know? Maybe they don't care because it's not consuming gas and as long as the footprint is small, it doesn't congest Tokyo. Anyone knows, please leave a comment. Again, please educate us. Because uh, if you are a long-time viewer, you guys got to realize, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I like to learn by buying these models. Uh, but it doesn't mean I know anything about them. All right, so that's the classic Mini, and this is by Greenlight. And uh, that's a pretty cool one. I like it because I you know, 
of classic minis. Now let's get this guy spinning on its own. <coughs> Boy, I don't know what my deal is. I have like some spontaneous coughing problem here if I get a dry throat from talking too long. So I apologize. Alright, well, I do like X-Car toys. Uh, in fact, for this one, there's no exposed axles. This one had exposed axles, so I sharpied them black. Although Sharpies are technically a dark purple or a dark blue. So that's a really, that's a good plus. I like that the ex axle isn't exposed. So, and then this one has painted taillights. So again, upgrade. So this is a much nicer, technically, model than, than this one. Although this is kind of neat because it's such a weird car in reality. So do you like these little electric mini vehicles? The Wooling EV? Will you someday join the half a million plus people that drive these things? At least if you live in Southeast Asia, I'm sure these are sold. I suppose you could drive this around Bangkok. You just don't want to go on the motorway. But there's so much traffic here. It takes like three minutes to go the equivalent of half a mile here. So you're not attaining high speeds. I also see people riding bicycles more further than cars in traffic. So. Thank you for watching today, and I'll see you in the next X-Car Toys video. And check out those other channels. Check out every one of my subscriptions if you're new to collecting. Alright, see you guys.